Can you build a dynamic range expander? This question comes to us from Ken in Fort Collins, Colorado, home of a lot of beer, <laughs> north of us out of here. So uh, Ken writes, given the loudness wars and the squeezing of dynamic range, couldn't you just design something to reverse that process? Well, yes and no. There certainly have been a few products out that are dynamic range expanders. I see them a lot in software-based products for like Pro Tools and recording. People have these dynamic range expanders, which essentially just look at the peaks uh, and, and, and kind of, uh, they're, I know they're all software oriented, but some of the older ones even used to be analog oriented. And you would just, you know, as it rose up, it would just keep rising and you would kind of expand it. The problem that you have is that it's very difficult to know what peaks to expand and at what time period. So we can't know, unless we take apart the music individually, we can't really know uh, in advance how the the range is going to go up and whether it should go up whether it's supposed to go up um, more than that dynamics is the difference between loud and soft so one of the things you want to do if you have this loudness war going on where they compress everything so it's just a kind of a wall of sound it isn't so much that you want to expand the dynamics you want to reduce the loudness so a better tool would be if you could design a machine to understand musical content, to know when something should be low and when something should be high, that it, if, if it could figure that out, which I don't know how any, anybody would do that. And I, I've had a number of discussions with, with people about this. And the general consensus is it, it's way, way, way over most people's heads to try and examine the music, to understand the con content, to know what needs to be reduced and what needs to be expanded so it doesn't sound pumped or funny. Because a lot of dynamic range expanders that you hear in software, they, they can sound like, woof, woof, you know, like the kind of pump. And yeah, it would be great if we could remix, decompress, all that terrible loudness, but then <laughs> you'd probably have the musicians who wanted it loud in the first place and, and, and paid money to get it loud. They'd probably be all pissed off, right? I, I'm full of that. But I, I, I think it could be done and maybe someday it will. But right now, that is really tough stuff. But I agree with you. The loudness wars, bad, bad, bad. Dynamic range is is great i mean if i if i can talk quietly or i can talk loudly to make a point to do you know whatever it it really adds life and color to the talking and to music i mean great music is dynamic there are soft passages to give us a break and then get back and grind away for a while and then give us a little bit of a break again, let us off. I mean, classical music is wonderful for that. These huge crescendos that we build up to in anticipation, and then it quiets down and we have to, have to listen and just kind of get sucked into it and your mood changes. Dynamics are amazing, really amazing. And I wish musicians would stop with the loudness wars. And I, I don't know why they do it. It used to be, in, in, in the old days when everything was on radio, the loudest channel, the loudest music was the one that got noticed. But radio is almost irrelevant today. Everything's streaming. Everything we listen to is by choice. It's very rare that we're given radio privileges, you know, for new stuff. Maybe if you're just going on, on uh, you know, random on Spotify or something. I, I, I don't know, but I don't think it's necessary anymore. And I think that day is gone and I hope it's gone because I'd sure rather be easier to make good recordings like we try at Octave Records than uh, trying to fix all the bad recordings out there. So, all right. Thanks. Hi to you neighbor up in Fort Collins and I'll talk to you later. Bye.